Welcome back to the Movement is Medicine podcast. Dr. Gene Shirakabad here with Dr. Megan Weezer, Dr. So, Corey. My legs are sore. How? Hey, you didn't say yeah. anything about my soreness. Are you sore? I'm dying. Oh, I'm not sore. I'm just tired. My legs feel tired. Tired. Yeah. My weird. traps. This is the first time I've cleaned. Yesterday was the first time I've cleaned or snatched. I did both of them in like two weeks. So you must be living. And in I a did very heavy house. <laughs> Huh? You must be living in a very dirty house. Oh, I hate it here. <laughs> um, you must be tired because that, that was a good opportunity for you, Corey. The cleaning, cleaning in a while. Yeah. yeah. I, I had faith that you would come through with it. I'm here for you. Mm. I'm here for you. Uh, we. This is the first time we're together, the three of us, on a podcast. I was going to say we worked together yesterday. The, the, year, <laughs> the year 2023 of our Lord. Yeah, not not, um, not 2013. So that was funny because nobody else except for your dad picked yeah. that up. You said 2013? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on on the last podcast where Jim um, guest hosted with us, we talked about uh, mindfulness again and, and goals and resolutions and stuff like that. I opened the podcast by saying happy 2013. And these two yahoos, Jim and, and Corey, they're like, yeah. Oh, well, I, I if I was here, I 100% would have yeah, caught that. I didn't hear anything. Nobody caught it except for Corey's dad, who tried to make a point of it, but then he raced it because he felt bad. Apparently. So our one listener <laughs> caught it. Hi, Dad. <laughs> one, our one super fan. We have a yeah. lot of listeners at this point, um, but only Do one we? that actually listens and pays attention to the words mm -hmm. that come out of our mouths. Um so it would be fun. You, you mentioned this, and I agree. I think it would be fun if we say, like, five wrong things on the podcast and have our listeners comment on what five wrong things we said. If you find all five, you get an extra entry into the PlayStation 5. Yeah, there's, if you see that, still behind us, uh, the PS5. And if you want that PS5, all you have to do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. Which camera is running right now? All the, all the, all the cameras. This is weird. It's the same, literally the same setup as always. Look at that one, but cross your eyes, and then you'll be able to see both of them. <laughs> one eye goes one way, the other guys goes the other way. Um, and then if you hit her in the back of her head, she'll stay like that forever. Did you guys ever hear that? Yeah, because yeah, mine does this. I thought you were getting up to. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> hit him hey. again. <laughs> hit him again. And then it, it won't go happen. back until it. <laughs> I was wondering what would happen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, sorry for you audio listeners. So my car, you know, my, my car battery died, and yeah. um, you so graciously let me use your little portable charger. Mm -hmm. I was wondering what would happen if I attach one of the positive end to one of your ears and the negative side to the other ear, and then push the button. What do you think would happen? I think we might merge into one being. I think, I think that's, that's how science works. Um, like in Dragon Ball Z, you fuse. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah it would be a one to get comfortable. Super wheeze, <laughs> <laughs> not a mega wheeze, a super wheeze. Right, I already Sorry, am a mega wheeze. Yeah. yeah, wait, a, a giga, giga wheeze. wheeze. <laughs> giga is more than mega. A Google wheeze. That's too many wheezes. Why are we? Why is this me? Uh, I don't know. Cause it's cooler <laughs> than a how. Yeah. A mega how? Yeah. yeah. A super how? Yeah, that's not as fun. Uh... Oh, this. Yeah. yeah. Um, so new year, the 2023, not 2013, mm -hmm. uh, bring, brings about a whole lot of things. We, we've talked about this many times. We, we touched on it on um, the last podcast about resolutions and goals and, and really how fickle it is if you come up with something that is more driven by um, seasonality, that, that you're using an external source for internal motivation. Which is which is tough when that external source is fleeting, right? A new mm -hmm. year, there's no anchor to it. It comes and it goes. The calendar moves on, and this is why people have such a hard time with resolutions because they anchor themselves to something that is already in the past, and it, huh? it's hard to maintain that. Uh, resolutions, people make resolutions because of the turn of the calendar, right? It's a new year. Yeah, but I don't that's, think that's a bad thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm saying it's an inefficient thing. That's why people have a hard time sticking with it because they tie their goal to something that's already happened. A new year, the calendar changing, right? I think it's more because the goals they make are outcome-based and not behavior-based. Well, that's that's part of it, but they people don't want to make behavior-based goals because inherently they know that's incredibly hard. So and it's they, boring. They make it outcome-based because it feels like it's something that's attainable. But the reality is you have to change behaviors, not not go for outcomes. Um, but again, it's hard. And people 
people have a hard time deciding what are good behavioral goals. Uh, that's why places like ours, members are here <laughs> always, mm -hmm. right? They're, it doesn't matter, matter whether it's a new year or whatever happens, they're here, they're members, they have accountability to us, they have programming, they just show up. But they, they still ride that wave a little bit. We were, we were joking with them that Monday was a very busy day where everyone... Yeah, they were all gung ho for cycle 20 and then today it was like, nope, I'm over it. <laughs> what do you mean, nobody came today? Yeah, yesterday I had like a class of seven, a class of eight, and a class of 11, and then... 11, how did that happen? Yeah, uh, somebody showed up. Not that signed was, up. Us, Got okay. it. And then today it was like five, four, and four. Yeah, but that's also fatigue mm -hmm. kicking in, and um, <clears throat> people had senioritis a little bit. And not everyone works out back to back days anyway. Right. Yeah. Right. That's what you're you're tired. People are tired, and I was asleep by like seven thirty. Yeah, I, I passed out oh yesterday God, too. Really? I don't know why. I was sitting down stairs, and I just finished dinner, and uh, like I just put like. My fork down and I just sat there like this. Carrie <laughs> <laughs> was like, What's wrong? I said, I just got really tired. <laughs> she was like, You're supposed to go to bed right when you get tired. So if you're tired, go to bed. Okay. <laughs> oh Carrie put you to sleep. Yeah. Go to bed. <laughs> go to bed. Okay. Go to your room. Yeah. I, I have no room to talk because I fell asleep putting Zoe to bed. So, um, yeah, yesterday was tiring. But the, the point I want to touch on today. And, and this is a bit of a reiteration of what we talked about before with uh, speed bumps and roadblocks, um, that it's incredibly easy to get derailed when you create fickle goals that are not behavioral goals, they're outcome goals, and that they're not tested or vetted or any way or held accountable. Or you have any like practices in place or actions to take to reach those goals. Right. So it, it's incredibly easy to get derailed. So I thought it'd be good to talk on, on this episode today, not just to bash resolutions, which is very easy because the data is pretty clear that people typically don't stick to them long term. But what, what can people do from a, a a range of places when inevitable challenges arise, right? Roadblocks will happen, but more more often than not, a speed bump will happen. And a speed bump, regardless of the size, will feel like a roadblock. <laughs> we'll get to you. I don't know! <laughs> we'll get to you. You you got, yeah. You, your, yours isn't a roadblock. Yours is a giant wall. Thank uh, you. Brick wall that's been put on the highway and you're going 70 miles an hour and then the brick wall shows up. Thank you. I appreciate that analogy. That was um, more accurate. Yes. But a lot of people, there is a spectrum, right? From a situation like yours, which will derail most human beings to something that is not as intense, right? That a kid got sick or mm -hmm. I had to work late at work and it just mm -hmm. throws that momentum train just yeah. a little bit off the tracks. And that's all it takes. Yeah. Somebody says their New Year resolution. I'm going to work out Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Then January 2nd, Monday this year. Or maybe that was the third. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. It was <laughs> Monday. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, your boss asked you to work late. And now you'd miss the very first workout of the year. Does right. that? How does that throw you off? Right. So it Well, it comes down to being like adaptable, though. You know what I mean? Like you're always going to have something or reason to not stick to something. But that doesn't mean you... Like in that example, if you had to work or let's say you slept late and like, you know, missed your, your workout alarm or something like that, like move it to, you have to be adaptable, right? Like, okay, if I have time to do 20 minutes instead of 60 minutes, I'll do that. Or like maybe I'll do it Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday instead, because now today my plan is shot or altered. So now I have to alter what I'm going to do about it. Yeah, I think sometimes we have this all or nothing mentality yeah, yeah. of, well, shoot, I was supposed to wake up at 8, now it's 8.30, I won't be able to get a full workout in, I might as well not do it. Mm -hmm. But we've talked about it in Pathways and in memberships before, um, the body doesn't know like that you were going to work out for 60 minutes. It doesn't know minutes. what was programmed, it right. really knows what you give it. Right, so if you put 10 minutes of effort in, that's still 10 minutes more than uh, not yeah, doing I would have got if you didn't do anything, right. yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Um, before we go further down this, this path and give suggestions, do you want to cover the brick wall that came at you, Megan? Do you want to share your, your story? Really? That's up to you. 
I don't want to talk about the details. That's fine. I'm not. No, he texted me. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's no, no. It's not that much of a dick. <laughs> I was like, wow. <laughs> Corey, come to the rescue. I'm kind of torn to between saying thank you and being offended. No, know. you're still a dick, okay. but oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're not that much of a dick. Um, <laughs> Which is why I don't know whether to say thank you or still be yeah. offended. I don't know. Somewhere in between. Uh, is this a good time to talk about it? I mean, I, I think most of the viewers or listeners are are our members, and they know something is going on. Okay. So, I mean, again, it's completely. Yeah, up I've to gotten you. a lot of. Are you okay? <laughs> um, the answer is no. No, I'm not okay. I mean, I am, but I'm not. Yep. Like yeah. yes and no is the answer to that question, which I think is reasonable. Um. Okay. I will give the bare bones without details because it's kind of traumatizing to talk through it over and over again. Um, <clears throat> last weekend, so what's today? Today's Tuesday. Over New Year's weekend, uh, I, I was the victim of a financial scam and lost nearly all of my money, like all of it, with the exception of a little bit. That's, um... So yeah, yeah. It was a pretty spent... elaborate, intense scam. Yeah. Yes. Like it's not like I got an email from a Nigerian prince. Like. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 like say it. No, I don't even well, know what I'm saying. <laughs> um, it was some sophisticated deception, and. Uh, it would like I will never use the word traumatizing lightly ever again because I don't think I actually knew what trauma felt like until that. Um, yes, it was elaborate. It was sophisticated. I was angry, sad, I'm scared, in the scared. I like these guys know the whole week. Mm -hmm. I was like shaking. Like, my body could not calm down. And I didn't trust anything. Like, anything. I still kind of don't. Um, and, like, that feeling, of, like, that feeling of having to keep your guard up all the time. I already kind of do. That's because, the jersey in you. Oh, it's the jersey. It's the, like, single independent woman in me. Like, yeah. my fuck off kind of thing, you know? Um, you just toss me if it's... So, yeah. yeah, that's the jersey. Guys. That's the jersey. That's the jersey. Yeah. That's the jersey. A lovingly fuck you. Yeah, that's how, they, um, <laughs> that's how they say I love you in jersey. <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> you got you got the accent. Look at you. Yeah. Practice. yeah. <laughs> Once I didn't have to say Zhuang's name properly. <laughs> <I'm just laughs> practicing jersey accents. <laughs> Struggle with that. I want some coffee. Cool coffee. Um, I don't. What did I just say? I don't even. Um, something. Something about trauma yeah it was literally traumatizing um my roommate thank god when i found out it was all a scam i'm pretty sure i fell down the stairs no i didn't fall down the stairs i ran down the stairs i fell when i found out and was like hyperventilating and screaming crying shaking everything um i ran downstairs and my roommate shout out courtney you're the best um she heard me. She works from home and luckily didn't have a meeting for a few hours. So she uh, literally picked me up off the ground <clears throat> um, and like took me to the bank. She helped me call the police. Um, so, yeah, I have spent the new year trying to clean up that dumpster fire. And... I'm with, again without going into details at this point like I've done I think everything that I can which is more than most people do because shout out can I say yeah. okay um like <laughs> okay so William knows this I don't even know if he listens to this of course he listens William doesn't fucking everyone listen listens <laughs> <laughs> what uh <laughs> the first day I got back to coaching a few of the members could tell I was off which is kind of easy to do, I feel like, with me. Oh, yeah. Um, 
They couldn't hear you from the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> Clear indication something's wrong. Yeah, when they get out the car and don't hear anything, oh, poor your team must be coaching. Uh, making, like, oh, God, uh, something's wrong. Uh, I was asked if I was okay, and I was not. I still don't think I am. Um, And I lost my shit, like, started sobbing immediately. And William, thank God for him, um, gave me, like, this big hug and was kind of holding me as I tried to get my shit together. Uh, and I like briefly told him that I was scammed and he put me in contact with a friend of a friend or his friend. Um, I won't say their name, but, um, they were very helpful and like, I would not have known to do the things that this person told me to do. Um, and as a result of those recommendations, there have been investigations started with all the institutions involved, but <clears throat> there is no telling when or if I will get any of my money back. Yeah. And uh, I was I was here when you called the police and they were like, was it the scam? Like they knew, right? It was Well, that was the second time I called the police. Yeah, I mean they they knew. So it's... Yeah, they knew. It's a evidently a common fucking scam right now. Well, it's, but I had it's no common. clue. It's common for a reason. It must work. <clears throat> yeah, it did. Um, so, like, yeah, I feel violated. And I feel dumb. And angry and lost a little. All the, all the common yeah. things a, a victim of trauma would feel, whether justified or not. I think it's very weird calling myself a victim, but I guess I was. Yeah, but mm -hmm. I think when, when you have conversations of a victim, a variety of things, whether it's um, very similarly um, when somebody gets held up at either gunpoint, whatever, at knife point, it's a very similar conversation, right, from... You know, I really shouldn't have been walking there. Like, what do you mean you can walk wherever you want? Like, you, you start to internalize because you feel like you had some... Like, we always want a sense of control. Even if it's making ourselves the issue, we always want to feel and get some level of control back. So you saying, or any victim saying, well, I shouldn't have, is just trying to grasp at some control, even though you're further victimizing yourself but everything you feel you should feel even though it's not great right that's part of the healing process of you know working through those feelings of feeling dumb or feeling taken advantage of on the different spectrum of things it's not placing blame it's saying hey this is what i feel and this is kind of part of that process as much as it sucks mm -hmm. well that takes time takes time takes support process to talk through um but yesterday was the first time you worked out right since all of that yeah yep so i mean j just to, to bring all the that first time i like talked it out with somebody kind of briefly without hysterically crying too <clears throat> that's part of the process too um I think it, it's hard, and, and I hope that this serves as, as a way for you not to have to continually talk about it, right? That you could say, go watch that podcast, and you can see what happened. Um, mm -hmm. While, yes, continually talking about something is part of healing as well. Yeah, um, but reliving it. Like, yeah. even my, like, I have the good problem in that I have a lot of close friends. Um but like I just told the last few of them yesterday and I said, don't ask me questions, but this is what happened. Yeah. So ho hopefully th this can also serve as you're here. Go watch that. It'll explain it. Um, mm. But I, I think it, it's to tie back to what we started talking about. It's not just a speed bump. It's a gigantic brick wall. Yes. Right. Um, you, if you're anybody else, most people probably would not be working out for the next six to eight months. But this is a part of your life, right? This is a part of healing to get back to that. Um, so again, to bring it back, what was the spark where you said, I need to start actually integrating this back into my life? Like what was the motivating factor yesterday for you to be like, I need to work out? 
Uh, I was anxious and angry and wanted to rip the fucking barbell around. <laughs> okay, and rage. What what happened? <laughs> <laughs> and I hit a PR. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Moral of the story: Get really angry before you exercise. She went Hulk. I don't even know don't if do anger that. was it. It was just like. I don't know. I think I got to this point where I was like, these motherfuckers can't take any more of me. Like, they don't know who they mess with mm-hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Yeah. So you went to the anger state of grief. Yeah, I guess. And also, like, I know it's good for me, like, the anger stage, but also, like, the Megan, anything will be good at this point. Did your, you said you felt anxious before you worked out. Mm-hmm. Did, did that change at all afterwards? Yeah, I felt good. Yeah. I, worked out. I mean, I didn't do my full workout that was programmed, mm-hmm. but, you know, I did but we always say, what my body wanted, which yeah. was to rip around a barbell mm-hmm. for some cleans and snatches. Yeah. I'd say exercise is good for mental and physical health. It's neat to experience it, too. Like, you had, like, it was like, a, it acted as a bit of a release. Like, I felt like I was like, a, I could take a deep breath on the way home. When I when I left afterwards, yeah. So we, we talk about um, the difference between activity, exercise, and training quite often, right? And I think this is a bit of a trap that the core you were alluding to early on is that people make this goal for themselves: I need to work out, or I'm going to work out Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That's and they're gung ho about it. Then as soon as the boss goes, you have to work late, and that Wednesday goes out the window, or kid is sick, or you oversleep, or the alarm, <laughs> or, 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 it doesn't matter. Then you're like, oh, my original plan is out the window, so might as well scrap the entire plan, right? Throw the baby out with the water. Uh, with the water. Um, Bath water. Right, water. That's how you say it. W-U-E-D-E-R. Correct. That's how you. That's how they say it in Jersey. I say water. My mom says water. Because that's the proper way. Your mom is a very proper person. Um, mm-hmm. No. But it, it's it's zero sum. It becomes zero sum. Remember, we, we reference zero sum, and you both of you were like, what the hell does that mean? Yeah, yeah still, I'm going to need another explanation. All or nothing. <laughs> zero sum means all or nothing. Yeah. Didn't you say that? It's literally a phrase that it means it. <laughs> so learn it. Zero sum. Um, but it's not. It's it's not zero sum. The podcast you're referencing is from like a year ago. So <laughs> literally everything is from a year ago at this point, Megan. <laughs> it's 2013. <laughs> it's 2023. They were supposed to recognize that. You're spoiling the uh, five wrong things. It's four now. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Damn it. Um. So I think that that would be my my first suggestion or tip when when like trying don't treat it as zero sum never treat anything as zero sum particularly when it comes to fitness and and motivation branding don't let it fall on my dog <laughs> um so zero sum right if you create this goal for yourself i'm gonna i'm going to be working out um i think first it's Give yourself all three options, train, exercise, and be active. I think that Mm -hmm. opens up the field for most people that if you wanted to work out Monday, Wednesday, Friday as part of training, first, number one, is actually have a training plan. Buy a program, get a personal trainer, come to Recharge if you're around here, have that program set for you. If you don't have programming available, then it's about exercise, right? Go to the gym. Work out at home, do body weight stuff, or if you have a home gym, that's fine. Go move weights around. Give yourself a structure, five sets of five, three sets of 10, whatever. Just go work out um, and exercise, meaning that there's no cohesive plan to those workouts, but you're just doing workouts, whatever that is. If that's not available to you, then go for a walk, then move around, then set up standing goals for yourself, right? If you sit for a while, stand up every three to four minutes and move around a little bit. That's being active. Uh, Walking obviously being the best one. So then it gives you a a wide berth of things to do that it's not, you're not just locked into this. I set this goal, I already messed up this structure of the goal, so then I'm not gonna be moving through it. So that would be my first and big recommendation is give yourself a little bit more with to succeed. What about you guys? Any any tips? I blacked out while you were talking. Yeah, that's about 
Facts. <laughs> per usual. <laughs> when you and I have conversations. I'm sorry, what? Did you say something? Megan, I've been I... talking for the last 12 minutes. <laughs> At least I admit when I'm not listening. That doesn't help. <laughs> that does not help. Listen. I'm try- Yes, I am, Megan. I... Yes, I am listening. Here's how that works. I've got a lot going through my brain right now, all right? <laughs> Tips. Tips to succeed when... Did you see, by the way, that dude, He got. he's not allowed to go to FIFA World Cup games anymore? Why? Because apparently he touched the trophy and he was being a complete dick on the field. So he's not allowed <laughs> The there Salt anymore. Bay guy? Yeah. Hmm. I don't even know who he is or what no, he does. Either. Just a meme. He put salt on meat. meat. And he did it like this. And... Uh, and yeah, that that was it? I think that's it. Yeah, I don't think he's... Uh... That's all it takes? I think so, yeah. Just to be a popular Sign me meme. up. Side note, another meme. You know the um, the little kid like having his water and like side-eyeing people? You know that meme? No. The uh, Hasbala or whatever? I, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, he is on the Georgia football team that won the national ch- championship last night. Oh, never mind. It's definitely not the kid okay. I was talking about. Wait, what? Like he plays for the team? Yeah, he's on the team. Like his picture was a meme when he was a kid, and now he's in college oh, and won the national championship. I thought it was like, wow, definitely kids not playing the football. Kid I was thinking about. Interesting. No, I didn't know that. Um, tips to help people overcome speed bumps for training when, uh, when, I, I mean, when dealing yeah. with resolutions and such. Well, this is something I kind of did last week when I was in the thick of things. Like, what is something that can move me like 1% in the right direction? Which, like, some days it was like vacuuming or doing my laundry mm-hmm. and like getting out of bed when I want to stay in bed, not canceling plans with people, um, like still living my life kind of thing. This, that was something separate, but like, in the context of like working out or like nutritional goals or whatever, like what is one little daily action that is not a lot of effort, but will have a high impact on just slightly moving the needle toward your goal, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. I like that. Um, Low effort, high impact decisions or daily tasks. When, when I'm really stuck in a rut, I tend to ask myself a question. Um, and that question is, which inevitable do I want? What? <laughs> like, do you really think in his brain he says this? <laughs> which inevitable do I want? I literally say that. I, I just said I said it. <laughs> what? What does he even mean? Well, robot. if you let me speak on a podcast that we're having a conversation on, I will tell you what that means. I understand for people that don't know what zero sum means, it's hard to grasp a certain concepts. But I will explain it to you. I will take you along on this journey into my into my brain. Buckle up, kids. Oh, so weird. <laughs> Pot calling kettle black. <laughs> Jersey. So if you are in a rut, right, and, and if you go along that path, that's inevitable, right? That's one path of inevitable. You know where this is going to end up, which is you more of this. Though. But you have, if you it, call this a thought exercise, of course, okay. you don't know, but you know. I, I like to thought train, not thought exercise. <laughs> Continue. Well, here's the thing about thoughts they're very fickle and they change a lot, according to Megan here. That's true. So. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> So as a thought exercise, if you're in a rut, let's say that rut is you're having a hard time exercising or training or whatever, just being more active. Mm -hmm. So the question is, is this an inevitable that I want to continue with? And then you extrapolate that inevitable out. If I go along this path, what are some inevitables that will happen? I will get more Mm -hmm. out of shape. I will most likely feel worse. I will continue to deteriorate. And then your brain starts to kick into creativity mode down a path of worse scenarios. Mm -hmm. What is the other inevitable? I go for a walk. What happens with that inevitable? I go for a walk. I feel better. I might be more motivated to work out. Maybe I'll go for another walk and your brain starts to look at positive scenarios. So that's why I ask myself that question when I'm in a rut, which inevitable do I want? Which scenarios or life do I want to create? And the more inevitables that I come up with in my rut, the less I want to be in that rut. 
So I kind of self-motivate myself to go into the other one. And it usually starts with a very low ceiling, right? Call it the floor that, yeah, I haven't worked out in three to four weeks. Let, let me go for that walk because it's so frictionless. And, but it puts me on that path of a different inevitable. I think that thought process is a little advanced for people who are I like, know I know I'm in very advanced, Megan. No, I get it. Not yes. Say that. Don't twist I'm my a words. highly I'm you literally just said it. I said that thought process <laughs> is, is, is a very little advanced, advanced Correct. for people who are like that requires you recognizing that all the decisions you're making are purely out of comfort and not serving a future you. Sure, but anybody can do that or at least a version of that. Most people just yes. don't. They in the revel. terminology that I described earlier. They revel. <laughs> they revel in that inevitable, but they don't extrapolate it out. They live yeah. in this. They just they, they create a moat of excuses around their it's scenario. It's not like an audit of like what path am I going down kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, that that's a Which great is way to look at what it. what you're saying. My my system has always been a daily audit. Say what you will. It works. Um, I, I'm feisty this year, all right? Just you are. Strap in. You're, you're something. Let's, <laughs> if you want to call it feisty, we'll go with it. Um, <laughs> it's a funny way to pronounce Jersey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, I, I tend to operate in, in nets. Net positive, net negative. <laughs> you literally vi envision me in a net, didn't you? I did. Yeah. <laughs> Like a straight jacket. <laughs> yeah. No, like a fishnet. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, you and I have spent too much time together over the years. I knew exactly where your head went. Um, I hate it here. <laughs> but it, it forces you to truly audit goods and bad because our brain really wants to focus on the negatives because hmm. by focusing on negatives, it furthers survival because sur negative is a greater threat to survival. So our brain is, is innately focused on the bad because that keeps us alive, focusing on the bad. Good doesn't threaten death or survival. The bad does, so our brains want to highlight the bad. So I always look at what are the high emotional situations that happened in my day, the good and the bad, and then it was that day a net negative or a net positive? And that's it, and then I move on to the next day. Um, but I, I don't necessarily pick any one thing. Again, I try to weigh all the things that happened that resonated with me and, and move on with a net positive or net negative. But I, I, I tend to, and I know this is me and Jamie always tells me this, that I'm, that I'm weird in, in different terms. Yes. <laughs> um, but I, I, one, I'm not a reactive person. No, I, I don't not. react. When I, oh my God. When I FaceTimed him, I like couldn't get words out and he was just like waiting <laughs> for me to say the next thing. It's like, He's not reacting to me, like literally losing my mind. That is the hardest you've seen me cry. I've cried a lot here. I've like top three. That one. No, that's top one for sure. That was the worst thing to fucking happen to me in my yeah, entire life. But I think you, you processed it a little bit by then before you told me. And I think I've seen you cry harder than that. It was close. It was close. It was bad. It was bad. Mm -hmm. I yeah um I, yeah i'm not a reactive person i i process i listen and I, I take that all into account um but i i tend to not not react in the moment um because i know the moment is just that it's a moment and it's fleeting and typically me reacting does not make the moment better or solve anything it just contributes to whatever's going on um well going back to your like net positive net negative things like I think the important piece to take from that is like you're not only looking at the negative side of stuff, you're also looking at the positive. And there's research out there that shows that like yeah. your brain chemistry, your brain neural pathways change when you can identify and appreciate the positive side of things and like how you handle situations like an adversity. Absolutely. Like there's research out yeah. there with that. Absolutely. Yeah. That That's absolutely right. Um, and it works it, it, that I've done this for a long time. Um, the, the other piece is, uh, and this is why Jamie calls me weird. Um, aside from not reacting, I don't hold on to things. I don't carry things. Well, that's just a dude thing. Uh, not, not always. 
um, I, I think a lot of people, a lot of guys too struggle with, and we talked about anxiety and stress. Um, my, my modus operation is, well, you know, no, I'm just gonna let you talk. Okay. <laughs> is, I blacked out. I don't know. MO. Yeah. There you I go. got it. Yeah. It took about eight seconds, but <laughs> <laughs> I oftentimes with situations, there a lot of things are happening, right? Especially in business and working with people. A lot of times, I don't know how I will, but I believe that I will. So a lot of times, situations will happen, and and I have a feeling in the moment. I don't know how I will solve this or how I will move forward but I have trust in myself that I will, that I will figure it out. Um, and, and that process allows for creativity and allows for exploration and allows for, again, the flipping the perspective of, instead of going, I don't know how to do this, how will I solve this to, yeah, I don't know how to do this, but I believe that I will. And I, I invest in my future self to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And I believe in that. Um, and that's my that's my daily thought process. Like that's my baseline normal is is that mindset. And um, it helps, you know, to have you two yahoos that that's part of that, right? That I don't know how, but I believe with with a team like this that we can, um, that that's part of whether it's training or business related or working through your situation. Um, I don't know how, but I usually believe that we will. I know how. How? Corey, how? <laughs> no, um, the Mega Millions is one point one billion dollars. <laughs> 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 so we can buy a Mega Millions ticket. That's that's one. One point one billion split three ways. What would you do? Let's finish with that mm. thought experiment. If we won one point one billion dollars. Mm -hmm. So then we probably cash out with taxes and everything, say like 450 million. Yeah. So that's what three ways, like 133. Yeah. Like that. One yeah. Like 1.5 million each okay. or 150 million each. Oh, yeah. 150 million each. Yeah. yeah. What is oh, the third thing you buy? The third? Yeah. Why the third? Well, because the first two are going to be boring. The third car. <laughs> <laughs> the One third day. island. Yeah. <laughs> no. um, yeah, like the first one, you'll pay off your like your parents' house or something and buy mm -hmm. a happy meal or whatever. So what's the third thing you buy? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'd probably just book a bomb-ass trip somewhere. You wouldn't see me for like two you, months you and I'd Asia and Europe. <laughs> You got plenty of money. You'll be fine. Oh yeah, we we split it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you have your one fifty. Yeah. Okay. So what are you doing? I would. It's some. It would be something. It would be an experience. It wouldn't be a thing for me. Third would be the experience. That's fair. I don't know what the first two would be. I think the first two would also be experiences. I think my first would probably be paying off my student loans. Yeah. That. Yeah. The first would probably be paying off student loans. Gene said he won't do it even if he wins. I am not paying any bills. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> But I would I pay off nice. some of it. Yeah, I think For that nice. much, if I got 150 million, I would yeah. pay off some of it. You know what? Well, if I got a million, I wouldn't. You know, if you round the numbers of if I paid off my student loans, I would still have 150 million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so I would I would pay it off and still be okay. Yeah, that's fair. Um, yeah. You didn't answer. Yeah. The third thing. Yeah. Um, it'd probably be a car. What kind of student company? loans first. Um, I guess I was going to say a house second, but that process might take a longer time than I want. So, hmm. yeah, I think I would. Hmm. I'm trying to think of like the order of operations. I mean, the top three would definitely be like a big trip somewhere, but I think also maybe, I don't know if I'd buy a house, but I would like maybe live on my own. I love my roommates, but it's like nice having your own space sometimes too. I don't know, but I don't know if I would do that. Mm -mm. I, the I first think thing I would. The first thing you're supposed to do is find a money manager. Money manager, yeah. Oh well, yeah. Lawyer and financial manager. Don't run around in the street saying I want a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. Or post on social media. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah no.
your your like fourth cousin twice in the week will contact you and say, Hey, remember remember call her family? Yeah. Hmm. We help family out, right? Um I think I would buy a strip mall. What? You'd invest it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Essentially. You could buy a giant building or a strip mall or something like that. Find a way to turn it into passive income. Oh, I would passive. definitely do that. That would be your third purchase? Yeah. I don't know about investing. I think I would just buy a strip third mall and kick everyone out. And just use it for my... yeah. <laughs> this is mine. <laughs> Get out. I can picture Peter Griffin doing that on Family Guy. <laughs> All leases revoked oh, ASAP. God. No. That would be fun, though. I think. I don't know. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. I'd go somewhere for a long time. Warm or cold? All the above. They have those like three month long cruise ships that go all over. I cool. don't want to do a cruise. Why? Have you ever done a cruise? No. It's so much fun. I want to go to like South America. I'm going to hit on a cruise. Like, you can do it. Patagonia. <laughs> you can I'm do that on a cruise. You can do it. Brazil. On a cruise. Chile. <laughs> uh, Literally all the Galapagos. <laughs> Islands on a cruise. I'll go back on to Asia. Cruise. Thailand, Vietnam. What's the capital of Thailand? <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, well, um, you heard Megan's story. We talked a little bit about uh, mental strategies to get past the resolutions to, to do something that, that is sustainable, that, that is motivating mm -hmm. and keep you going. So let us know what you think. Let us know if this is helpful. So. Um, again, if you want a PS5 that's behind me, you can head over to YouTube. Uh, you can use at RechargeXFit as the handle. You can find us on YouTube pretty easily now. So subscribe to our channel. Mm -hmm. If you heard a couple things that were wrong, let us know what those were in the comments below. I have the Gene. This is Corey. Oh, it's still Megan. <laughs> Nelly. That's Nelly. That's Megan. Those are the five things. <laughs> and spoiled it again. Dang it. <laughs> we'll get better at this. Oh, my God. Thanks for tuning in. Um, at Recharge, we'll catch you again on the movement is medicine podcast from recharge in columbia maryland <laughs>